Hi, and uh, welcome back uh, to my channel. Uh, so, in my previous episode, in my last episode, I used uh, the HackRF and I did some experiments uh, transmitting uh, with uh, my Baofeng using uh, this uh, antenna. This is the, the typical antenna that is sold uh, with these uh, <coughs> Baofeng handheld uh, radios. And it is an antenna good for uh, VHF uh, and uh, UHF, in theory, okay? And uh, one of my um, viewers asked me if uh, he could do the same things and equally well or even better maybe using this uh, telescopic antenna. This telescopic antenna is uh, generally sold uh, with the HRF. I think it's called uh, Ant 500. Uh, there are other models called uh, Ant 700. I'm not really sure what this is because I bought uh, my HRF from China. So anyway, it's just a telescopic antenna. And the point is that uh, this telescopic antenna, of course, can be, uh, you know, scaled in its uh, length. And also I have here another antenna. This is um, another cheap antenna that is sold with uh, the RTL SDR dongle. OK, so this is one antenna that you basically plug. Uh, it's a magnetic antenna. You put on a metal uh, surface like that one, the yellow one. And then, uh, yeah, you can use it. And so, yeah, I, I want to try to answer the, the question uh, raised by, by my viewer. So if he could use uh, this antenna using uh, uh, this device, uh, the Nano VNA, which uh, is perfect. It's a perfect device uh, for this, uh, for this uh, goal. And by the way, I already made a few episodes uh, um, uh, regarding the Nano VNA. Uh, so let me see uh, just a second uh, if I can find it. Uh, um, okay. Um, so it's here. Yeah. I made a few episodes, in particular episode 35, 34, and 33. Okay. Uh, so if you want to have an introduction about uh, what this uh, nano DNA is, uh, go there. Uh, anyway, this is a 50 euros, 50 dollars more or less device and I think it's really a uh, good value for the money because uh, it precisely allows you to have a look uh, in something that is not very visible usually in the behavior of antennas uh, among other things that this thing uh, can measure. Anyway, what is the basic idea of uh, an antenna? So uh, when you plug an antenna to the, to the radio uh, the radio is going to transmit, of course, the, the, the signal to the antenna and part of the signal is going to be radiated by the antenna and uh, part of the signal is instead is being reflected, okay, back to the radio. And this is a bad behavior. Uh, first, first thing, because you're wasting power that is not being radiated, is going back to the radio. And second, because if this uh, radi uh, reflected power is too much, uh, the radio can also be destroyed, okay? So radios are not uh, uh, designed to uh, absorb power, they are designed to transmit power. And so you need an, an antenna that does not reflect uh, any power. And, uh, and so uh, each antenna is uh, good in the sense that it does not reflect uh, at some frequencies and it is bad at others. So this is a constant thing of all uh, antennas. And uh, this device here allows us to have a look uh, in this. So let me start first uh, with uh, this uh, uh, antenna here, which is the antenna I used uh, in my previous video. It's the antenna of the Baofeng. And so um, I'm going now to connect it here to the Nano VNA and show you the result. OK, so I've connected it here. And as you can see, now the Nano VNA is plotting a graph. In this graph, uh, um, the x-axis is frequencies. It goes from, uh, oh, well, I don't know if you can actually, let me try to zoom in a little bit. Uh, we are starting from uh, 50 kilohertz and um, stopping at 900 megahertz. So x-axis is frequencies and y-axis is reflection. So the lower the reflection, the better. And as you can see here, at uh, this antenna, is having very, very little refraction, reflections at uh, 432 megahertz. I don't know if you can see. And also uh, very little reflections. Um, let me move the marker over there. Here at uh, 153. 
Okay, so it is indeed a good antenna for UHF because that uh, 443 is precisely UHF. Instead, it's not a such a good antenna for VHF, even if it is sold as such, because uh, VHF typically is 144. And there, uh, the reflections are quite more significant, okay? Uh, there is this uh, notion of SWR, which measures the, the amount of reflection, and here it's already five you don't want the, reflect the, the SWR to be more than two, okay? Okay, anyway, let's, let's see again uh, what is the amount of reflection that we get uh, at the UHF. It is an SWR of 1.32, uh, sorry, 1.13 uh, at this point, okay? So this is uh, the, um, uh, the data about uh, this antenna. So this antenna is good for uh, UHF. Uh, let me have a look now at uh, this other antenna, uh, the chip antenna here, connected to the magnetic base. And uh, it's just to, to, see, to show you that uh, antenna can do crazy things. And uh, so this is the response that we get with this antenna. So let, let me, well, let's wait a, a second to let it stabilize a little bit. So as you can see, this antenna is good at many frequencies. Um, but of course, uh, you know, it's very, um, it's very delicate. I mean, it's just sufficient, you know, to move my hands over it to, to change uh, uh, the response. But okay, at the moment, uh, it looks like this antenna is uh, pretty good at uh, 550 megahertz. Okay, and by pretty good, I mean an SWR of 1.54 which is uh, quite a bit more than what uh, we had uh, before for the um, uh, Baofeng uh, antenna, which uh, was at, uh, at a SWR of only 1.13 at uh, UHF. So this antenna is uh, definitely not as good. At, uh, its best frequency is 550, but even there it has a SWR of only 1.55, okay? Anyway, here this antenna you can see has a very different uh, behavior than, uh, than uh, the one of the Baofeng. Anyway, let me try to touch the antenna. And so you see this antenna, of course, but basically all these cheap antennas are very sensitive to the proximity environment, okay? Especially conductive materials like my body. So the behavior changes change, uh, quite a bit uh, when, I, when I touch it. Um, all right, anyway, see, so this was about uh, this um, uh, antenna there. And, uh, so the reflection is uh, something, of course, very important, but I want to, to make a point here. Here I have a 50 ohm uh, dummy load. So the idea of this uh, 50 ohm uh, dummy load is that it's going to sink uh, the power that it receives, but uh, do not reflect back uh, anything, or, or at least very, very little. So let's see how this goes. And so as you can see, it is indeed the case that we get basically no reflections across all the spectrum. So this is a good uh, 50 ohm uh, load, but of course it is a terrible antenna, okay? So uh, what I'm talking about in this uh, video is uh, SWR, so the amount of reflection. It's only one of the indicators of antennas, it's not uh, the whole story. In fact, the physics of antenna is uh, very, very complicated and, uh, you know, I'm definitely not ex an expert on this topic, but uh, we're only discussing this uh, reflection behavior, which anyway is very important. Um, it's one of the dominant factors of antennas. Okay, so we are finally reaching uh, the point where I discuss this uh, Akaraf telescopic antenna. So let's see how it behaves when it's completely, you know, uh, unfolded, how to say. So let me connect it and we can have a look. Okay, so this is a, uh, the behavior of the antenna when uh, its length is at the minimum, let's say. And as you can see, it has a very clear peak around here. So let me put the marker there and release it. It is 405 megahertz. So let me, the point is that if I touch this thing, it's going to create uh, some, uh, to modify a little bit the behavior of the antenna. So I want to avoid touching it uh, as much as possible, but anyway, at the moment, we are staying at 400 megahertz, so the, the, um, 
the bottom here, the, the local low is at 405 megahertz with an SWR of 1.48. Okay, so I can now try to uh, extend a little bit uh, this antenna and see what, uh, what changes. So as you can see, by extending a little bit, uh, we have reduced, uh, we have moved uh, the... Um, so let me zoom in a little bit more. Uh, you don't need to see the details, the, the, what is important is just uh, the graph. So we have moved uh, a little bit uh, the, the bottom point to the left, okay? So the longer the antenna, the lower uh, the frequency uh, where you have this bottom. So let me extend it a little bit more. And so as you can see now, the bottom has moved quite a lot. So let's see where it is at the moment. It is at 252 megahertz, more or less. So let me extend the antenna a little bit more. And let's see what happens. It moved uh, even more. And now we have uh, uh, reached uh, 170. Uh, let me extend it a little bit more. I want to make a point, of course, uh, so be patient. And uh, we are now at... Uh, uh, well, let me extend a little bit more. I basically want to reach uh, a good result for VHF. Uh, so VHF is where the marker is. So let's see if we can manage. So a little bit more of extension. Okay, so it looks like uh, it's there. I managed to extend uh, uh, the antenna in such a way that now uh, we have a decent uh, low here at uh, uh, 144 megahertz and uh, uh, the, the reflection now, the SWR is only 2. Whereas here at 144 megahertz, this is the antenna of the Baofeng, it was 5 if you remember before. So we can actually get a better behavior with this telescopic antenna compared to the, to the one of the Baofeng if we uh, find the right length, okay? Now, uh, however, by doing this modification, the antenna is uh, exhibiting other bottoms and in fact are even uh, lower. So let me see uh, what is the, the, the other bottoms. It's one is around 330 megahertz. And the other is around 513. So let me try to extend a little bit more the antenna. So I want to move this uh, local bottom here a bit to the left until we reach uh, 440, which is uh, UHF, uh, where the marker is at the moment, okay? So it's this point here. So let me do the extension. Of course, when I touch it uh, with my hands, uh, it, uh, it does um, a dramatic change. So we are not yet there, so I need uh, to further extend a little bit. Almost there. Um, Okay, so now we, we found uh, um, a length of the antenna, we are at 450 megahertz, where uh, the SWR is only 1.65. So this is a decent antenna now for UHF and could be used, it's not as good as this. Huh? This antenna was better at UHF, uh, the, um, the SWR was only 1.13, so very, very little reflections. Uh, but this is also okay. And anyway, this is also good at other frequencies, as you can see. For example, it's not too bad at, uh, at the moment at uh, 620 megahertz. So the SWR is 2.07. So I think it's acceptable. You can transmit uh, over there. So uh, basically, uh, the point of this video is that, uh, yes, uh, uh, the telescopic antenna can actually be better than, uh, than this uh, Baofeng antenna at some frequencies, given that you find the right, uh, the right settings, the right length. And the way to, to find this right length uh, is, unfortunately, you need a device like this. Uh, Nano VNA, it's, uh, it's a very good uh, tool for, for this. It does the job perfectly. It's possible to, to have these readings also with a spectrum analyzer, with a, with a coupler. But, uh, you know, it's definitely way, way, way more expensive. Uh, overall, this is a great device uh, for that. Um, I just want to mention one more thing. 
since the telescopic antenna is so popular among uh, people with uh, the HRF, uh, in the Mayhem uh, software, so let me zoom in a little, a li little bit more, in the Mayhem firmware of the PortaPak, if you go to uh, Tools, uh, you have a, um, an app, so you're not uh, seeing anything, sorry. Uh, if you go to Tools, uh, you have this uh, antenna length utility. Okay, here you can uh, set up the frequency. For example, let me try to say 200 megahertz. I don't know, there, something, 200 megahertz and something. It's over there. And, um, and here it's telling me the length that I need to set the telescoping antenna, 37.3 centimeters, to get a, a good response. Okay, so let me just try to do, to do that. Uh, so, 37, let me turn on the light also, 37.3 uh, centimeters. So I have here this, uh, this thing that I can use to measure kind of precisely this length. So let me just do that very quickly. Um, 33, so it's not too long. Okay. Well, I can do that horizontally so you can see with me what's going on so i have here the, the full length of the antenna and uh, so we are at the moment at more than 50 centimeters so sorry for the mess sir. Um, so let's see 33 it's more or less there okay so i think we need to Compact it a little bit more. And now we are at 34 centimeters, so one more centimeter and 33. Okay, so let's see how uh, it works now. So this was a setting suggested for, let me replug properly the antenna. So this was a, a setting suggested for 200 megahertz. So let's see what the nano VNA says. And as you can see, we have a a button there so let's go investigate and uh, it is at uh, um, 260 megahertz okay so you know um, let me try so yeah it's not very precise so the information you get uh, with uh, with this tool of course depends on many factors it gives you a, a more, ah, uh, actually it was 37.3. I measure only 33, I'm stupid. So let me try to extend it by more or less four centimeters. Um, okay. And now we are at uh, 200, 225. Anyway, so if I extend it a little bit more, I'm getting, so it's pretty close to the 200. Uh, the 200 would be here very close actually yes um, but of course um, these measurements are not anywhere precise okay it depends on too many factors and uh, um, also the proximity of other conductive elements and stuff like that so anyway it gives you a more or less good indication for um, the, the length you want to set uh, your antenna to but uh, is not uh, as good as a vector analyzer like uh, this nano DNA Anyway, I like uh, very much this antenna uh, that you get with uh, the HRF. Once you have a tool like this, uh, you can tune it uh, kind of precisely and more or less use the HRF on all the frequencies that uh, it's capable of. Uh, okay, so that's, uh, that's all for this video. Hope uh, it was helpful and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye bye.